Hello everyone and welcome to another live from the workshop and today it might not be quite obvious what we're doing because not all the pieces of uh, today's project are here. Some are quite literally still being made. Um, but this is my Evil of the Daleks Emperor in 5 inch scale. People have been asking me to make this for many years and it has been, in all seriousness, on and off, this has been about five years in the making. Um, because to cut a very long story short, I uh, drew up the plans for it and then I went back and forth um, because my skills just weren't up to scratch to do it. Um, and so then I finally drew up some plans uh, before Christmas, put them off to one side, and I didn't do anything with them. However, with the coronavirus outbreak, I find myself finishing off lots of... Um, lots of... Uh, uh, projects that uh, I never finished or never started and this is one of them. So here we have the uh, head piece or at least as I call it the crown I suppose. Um, you can see that I've already given it a little bit of a silver spray um, but it hasn't really come out exactly as I wanted so I'm gonna dig out. I don't have it to hand. You'll probably see that in the next bits um, after the bit I'm about to do. Um, some silver um, paint which I'm going to uh, paint that up with. Um, but this is going to be the crown part. Um, I've also got obviously the top bit and the bottom bit, the main base body, is the bit that's still currently being cast. Um, so overall this is just card and then the uh, these crenellations or whatever you want to call them are made up of resin which I've stuck into place. And it's got this, um, this peg on here so I can slot the body into the top of the head because I actually, as inaccurate as it is because the original prop was completely static, um, I'm actually going to have my version uh, with a rotating head. Um, however, the first thing I'm going to do is actually paint all of the um, black highlights uh, in between the crenellations uh, on the head, so let's get on with that. So unusually I'm doing a voiceover during the construction part. The reason for this is because I did miss something out of this video which I would like to address. Firstly, the dome piece that I made was painted off camera because it was just easier. And secondly, the actual body itself is made of a mixture of cardboard and all of the struts are sculpted with Milliput. This isn't something that I mentioned in the video, but as I said, it is something that I feel needs to be said as it's not shown on camera. As you will know, sculpting things often need to be done off camera due to it being a bit more complicated and difficult to film. And so here, finally, after many, many years of planning and weeks of work, my more or less five inch Dalek Emperor from Evil of the Daleks. Now I have here an Evil of the Dalek guard, and I have here an Andrew Gum, because it's the only one I've got to hand immediately, um, second Doctor. And as you can see, I'm sure some people are going to go, whoa, hang on a minute, that's incredibly small. And it kind of is, as I said, it's not quite in scale. It's about half an inch, a few centimetres out of scale. That's just, when you're building things by scratch, that's just something which happens. However, you've also got to bear in mind that when we see it on screen, it is not at floor height, it is on a plinth. And when you sort of see it like that, slightly raised, it starts to look a bit more in scale. Um, it does have to be raised slightly to get the full effect, but in general it is in scale um, with the figures. Um, so the actual model itself, obviously there's not a, anything really uh, features wise. The head does turn because the head is just um, slotted into the body. Uh, I know some people will ask me about if the eye stalk moved. I did try to come up with plans to do the eye stalk pivoting, but it just... Without going into all the details, I tried so many things. I tried using, you know, like a, 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 a Dalek dome to use a normal eye stalk to pivot, and it just, the bottom line is it wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it didn't work. It became too difficult um, to then be able to reproduce as a cast. So in the end, I just decided to, to leave the uh, eye stalk as it was. And in all fairness, in, in researching this and looking for 
plans and things for the measurements and whatnot, uh, I uh, went round a lot of people asking about it, uh, and including some who'd actually spoken to people who were there on set when the story was filmed, and they confirmed the prop never moved. Contrary to what some people think, the prop was completely static. And so, in actual fact, having the static eye stalk is, is accurate, but having the turning head is actually inaccurate. Um, but I like the turning head feature, it adds a nice little extra to it. Um, the one thing that I think some people might question on this is that the head looks a bit small. And that's what I thought, but to cut a very long story short, I went through all my measurements, and even though it is slightly out of scale, the measurements of the body added up to the measurements of the head, and I couldn't work out why the head didn't look right. However, then I looked at a lot of reference pictures, and I noticed that when we see the Dalek, when we see the Emperor, we see it slightly up, and slightly off to the side. And if I hold it like that, now maybe it's just me, but suddenly that head looks more in scale. <laughs> and the only reason, the only reason I can think of that is because when you're seeing it like that, that's how you're used to seeing it. When you see it like that, suddenly that's at an angle that we don't usually see the Emperor and it looks odd. But the crown should be the width of the upper body, which as you can see, mine more or less is. So as weird as it looks, that head is actually in scale, but it doesn't look right. I know it doesn't, but it is, I promise you. Obviously, well, it's in scale within the limitations of the errors, slight measurement errors I made. However, as I have said, I'm also doing casts of this, or I think I said that at the start. If I didn't, I'll say it now. I'm making casts of this to put on my Etsy shops. Uh, and so here we have the first test shot cast that has come out. We have the main body. We have the crown, which slots into the top. At this point, you may notice that the ridge between the crown and the body is slightly taller on the casted version. The reason for this is because on the original version, after casting, I did make it slightly shorter. However, due to currently limited resources, I was unable to rectify that on the cast. As such, if you do want to make it shorter on the casted version, it would need to be filed down. However, at some point, I do plan to try and make a different, slightly larger head so it looks more in scale, and at which point I may also make an updated version of the body. However, for now, the ridge is slightly taller on the casted version than it is on the original. We have the dome piece, which sits on top of the body. We have the eye stalk, which obviously does fit in there, but obviously it needs glue to hold it in. And then we have uh, one of what would be 12 in a kit of the globes that go around there. And then we have one of two would be in a kit of the globes that go there. So to break it down, the kit will come with two small globes, 12 large globes, one eye stalk, one dome, one crown piece, and one body. Now, a couple of points just to, to raise regarding the sales of this. Firstly, I am only going to be selling one of these a month due to the sheer amount of resin it takes to cast these up. I can only afford, at present time at least, or for the, and for the foreseeable future, to make one of these a month. So if you go on my eBay and it's not there, it probably means it's sold this month, but check back uh, at the start of uh, next month and hopefully there will be one up there. Um, but I get the feeling these probably are gonna sell very quickly. Uh, second point, I am selling these only in kit form. I will be making no pre-painted, pre-made versions. Again, simply because of the amount of time that would take and the amount of paint I would need to use and everything like that, it would drive up the cost phenomenally. As it stands, this kit alone is £60, which I'm going to come back to in a minute, but if I had to paint it, that's going to go up by at least another potentially £20, and it's just, I appreciate that that's a, that's, a, that's a high price, and so to keep it fair, I'm not going to do painted versions, simply because I want to keep it the price as low as I can. Um, which brings me on to this whole kit, the resin one comes in at a weight of just shy of 500 grams, and that is even including a massive hole in the bottom of it to keep the weight out. Now, um, it, in the progress of this, I've had some people say, well, why don't you try doing different casting methods and things like that to try and lighten it? I have actually, I'm not even gonna tell you how much it is, because it's a lot. I have actually made a loss making these casts because I bought so many different types of resin that I can use for other things, to be fair, but I tried so many different types of resins, so many different types of casting, slush casting, freeze casting, dry casting, uh, just so many different types to try and make it as light as possible. But the simple truth is resin is, no matter how much hardener you put in, resin is 
a brittle material and the thinner a cast the more brittle it becomes and so the bottom line was making it this way with the hole in the bottom like that was the best way to keep it structurally integral and light to the best combination. Uh, and as such, having done the math of it, this cost, the, the, the cost of this kit is going to be £60. Now, at the time of recording, uh, due to the ongoing COVID-19 situation, my prices are, uh, postage prices, I should say, are higher because I'm having to get parcels picked up from home. I can't go to the post office due to reasons of myself isolating, but I'm also isolating for the purposes of those that I am looking after. And I cannot afford to expose myself by going to the post office post office because then it risks them being exposed through me and it's not a risk risk I'm willing to take. So I'm having to get parcels collected from home, which means my prices, my postage prices are more higher. Now, this weighs 500 grams and there is just no way of getting around that with the COVID-19 situation or without it, this is going to cost a lot postage wise because of the weight of it. That's just a fact and I don't want to I don't want to go into rant territory here but I, I want to bring this up because since I've had since I've had to raise my postage prices I have had some people try and barter and try and make offers and try and get my products for cheaper so it can compensate them for the higher postage cost but here's the bottom line I don't consider myself a business but for the sake of using this analogy during this time, shops and businesses still have to make sales. They still have to have profits to keep going. And so if I lower, my, the postage costs are what the postage costs are. That's just, that's just how much they are. If I then lower the price of my products to compensate people for that, suddenly I'm making my products at a loss and then eventually I will have to stop making them because I won't be able to afford to do it anymore. I fully appreciate that it is annoying for people and I, but you've got to bear in mind, that has cost me, having, having higher prices is costing me sales because people don't want to buy it if they've got to pay that much postage. But that's a risk I've got to take because at the end of the day, it's do I keep low postage costs, go out to the post office when I'm supposed to be isolating and then risk contaminating people who I'm supposed to be looking after? Or do I deal with having the occasional message of people saying, why are your postage costs so high? It's ridiculous, but still make sales. It's, you know, it's a, it's a no-brainer at the end of the day. So, you know, I, I, you know, I want to make it clear that I am, which is the other reason why I'm not selling these, again, as I said, I'm not selling these painted because it, it will drive up the cost. So to sell these as cheaply as I can, I am going to be selling them as you see them as a kit, one a month, but you've just, you've got to expect the postage cost is going to be higher because it weighs a lot. There's no getting around that fact. That's just the way it is. So, as I said, I apologise I went into slight rant territory there, but it is something that I feel is, is, is a point I need to raise because it is something that has come up uh, now and again. Now, one final thing that I will say is due to the fact that I'm only selling one of these a month, this is an eBay exclusive. This will not be available ever on my Etsy shop. If you want this, you've got to go through eBay. Um, but that brings to a close a, what is certainly for me actually, a landmark live from the workshop because this is one of those things that I really never thought I would be able to do and I really do turn around a lot and say I'm very pleased the house came out but this goes far beyond anything I've ever made before. I often get asked what's your favourite custom and I often say in response to that there's too many to choose from, this is a real contender for that position I have to say. Um, so, as always, I hope you all enjoy this video. Like, favorite, subscribe, share, it really helps me out. I'll sure the description below for a link to my Patreon. I'm doing my very first figure animation and you can get involved. There's exclusive content and rewards for those who do so and finding my Patreon in any way gets your name at the end of my videos. I salute you all and I will see you in another video very soon.